Hey everybody, it's Bonnie and Quiltville in the basement. How is everybody today? It's Thursday evening, first Thursday in October. Loving, loving the fall so far. Um, we decided not to go to the cabin this weekend, which means I'm home, which means I can do a quilt cam, well, almost midweek, not quite, a little bit more than midweek, and we can spend some time together. I spent almost, I would say half the day in my studio today, condensing things down. I had bags of triangle parts. Hi, everybody waving. Bags of triangle parts, boxes of partial projects, boxes with leftover pieces from finished projects that, that you know, the project's long done and gone, and here's these baggies of leftover triangles and squares and, and leftover four patches and part string blocks and whatever. So I cleared off some shelves and eliminated a lot of the stuff that was just hanging around. Um, seems like everything around here is on a deadline and on a priority list. And the things at the top of the priority list get done first. And the things at the bottom of the priority list are things I really wish could be at the top of the priority list because they're things that absolutely bug me. So one of the things that got done today, I dusted. I vacuumed, I moved stuff away from the walls and I vacuumed and I used the hose thing and got up all of the little bits of lint and fluff and threads and dog ears and stuff that were the regular vacuum just wouldn't reach. You know, sometimes you just get what you can and you leave the rest for later. Well, later <laughs> happened today. So I got that done and then um, all my information from China is coming in. Hi everybody, it's so exciting to see the things floating on the bottom of the screen. Um, we got our packets today, at least I did. So I have my name badge and my, my documents wallet to hold my stuff, my passport, and I've got my visa ready. And, and there was a gifted set of decorative chopsticks along with a paper to show you how to use chopsticks and what not to do in China with chopsticks forever. I mean, for, for instance, Never leave your chopsticks just stuck in a bowl, like in a bowl of rice where they're just sticking straight up. And never let your chopsticks point at somebody else across the table. This is bad Chinese etiquette. So um, things that we've never thought about before. If you set your chopsticks down by your bowl, that means you're still working on your dinner and, and don't take it away yet. But if you put your chopsticks across your bowl, then you're done and they're going to take take that away from you. So uh, all of these things are going to be a new experience. We leave two weeks from today. At least two weeks from today, I fly to Seattle because I'm coming from the East Coast. I would not make my connection in time to get straight on the plane and then go um, to China from there. We're going to be mostly in Beijing and um, doing day trips out from there. So this project, ta-da, I showed you this before. I know I have. It's been um, on my table with my kit making stuff so that I could make the kits for my 20 travelers. And those kits got finished today. And the pattern for this got um, written today so that all of my travelers will be getting this in their email from craft tours so that they can kind of prepare. I'm doing a partial kit because I have to worry about weight limits and luggage space. So what they're getting is the kits for the seven hexi stars with the papers that go with them and thread and needles and pins and wonder clips and everything that they will need, um, a needle threader for just for, for stitching on the road. And then when they get home, they'll be adding their own background fabric and their border fabrics here because this is supposed to be scrappy. And maybe they'll want to include some of the pieces of fabric that they pick up while we are traveling together in this quilt. Now this um, pattern has also been added to the digital section of the Quiltville store, but don't buy it yet. Don't don't buy it yet. It's at a low, low price of $6.50 right now, but if you wait, I'm putting all of the digital patterns um, on super sale while we are gone, and it'll be for the duration that we are gone to China, Those all the digital patterns will be on sale in the store. Now I have a funny story oh, to tell you. Remember I told you that, that Sharon Holtgren contacted me and said, I have two cases of rulers. Do you want these center square rulers? And I said, yes. Well, her email came this evening saying, um, guess what? Those two cases, they weren't rulers. They were books. 
So her, what her husband thought was two cases of rulers in their storage unit was books. So now I don't have them coming anymore. And she said um, that if she does find some, they're in the middle of moving and they're downsizing. And, and if, if you've been lived in any place for any length of time, especially if you've run a business out of your home, there can be stuff stashed everywhere. So she's going to look some more for me for those center square rulers. But if you heard me mention them last time, um, let's just send all of the positive wishes that, that she will find them. And then we need her to have the strength to endure so she doesn't kill her husband <laughs> in the process. So um, let's see, what else is going on here? Sugar bowl blocks are, are starting to multiply. This is what I've got so far. And I'm not sure how many, I, I think I wrote down somewhere how many I have. I, some of these I have pinned in sets of 10, so I, that makes it easy to count. But I need about 120 or more to make a couch-sized quilt. They're six inches finished. So if I do it 10 by 12, that's only 60 by 72. So if, if, I, if I want it bigger than that, or I might make it bigger with borders. At, at any rate, this is making a big dent in my recycled shirt stash. And I was thinking, too, of other things that you could do with these. Um, maybe you would want to do it with Christmas fabric. Christmas fabric would look great. Also, just a two-color quilt. What if you did the whole thing red and white, and you did opposite blocks? So where you see the light design here on this block, so you'd have some with light design and some with dark design. And when you put those together, you know, the red squares would hit the white squares, so you're going to get a little four-patch look there. There's so many different things that you can do with these. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited about them. So I did some before we even got started. Boy, I'm so organized at home. I can hardly stand it. I'm ready. Whoopsies are going to slide right off my cookie sheet. I love cookie sheets at the cutting table because there is a lift. Stuff doesn't slide. And it's a big enough surface that I can stack quite a bit of stuff on here. And I can put cookie sheet on top of cookie sheet on top of cookie sheet. These ones have never been used in my kitchen nor were the, will they the family has been told leave the cookie sheets alone there's other 36 years worth of marriage cookie sheets upstairs but these ones are for sewing only and what I love about them is that they also fit right underneath the the tray on my to my accu quilt so it doesn't take up a lot of, of space to have these what I've got here is kind of a combination most of this is recycled fabric. I didn't, I was cutting at the cabin. I didn't have all of my recycled fabrics with me. So there are some quilt shop fabrics that I added that had, were gifted by other people. For instance, this one, this is a shirt. The chickens are not, <laughs> but I love this combo. How fun is this? I'm pretending that these are the wild turkeys we saw in our, in our yard at the cabin this, this past week. But I just think that combination is going to be really cute. It's okay to have an idea like, oh, I'm going to sew with all 1930s repros, or I'm going to sew with my Civil Wars, or I'm going to sew with my reproduction fabrics. And it's okay to throw in something that is totally not of that genre just to add some interest. Um, I like to imagine that, okay, this is my limited stash. This is all that I've got. I don't have another huge stash at home. If I wanted to make this quilt, what would I have to sew with? Um, one of the other things that I did, I love this combination. This was also in the chicken fabric bundle that was gifted. It's kind of a polka dot on crackle. And I put it with this shirt stripe that's blue and white together. And I think that's going to be a really interesting one. In fact, I think I'll sew that first, even though I'm dying to sew with the chickens. Another one um, that I did. In fact, this, this leftover piece, all I had was these, these two small pieces. Instead of one long strip, I've got two short ones. This is all that remains of one of my grandpa's shirts. And when he passed at 94, the one thing that I wanted was any cotton shirts that he had. I didn't want the polyester ones. I wanted the, the cotton ones. And it took one whole shirt to do the binding on my um, crisscross applesauce quilt from Scraps and Shirt Tales 2. That's where those um, shirts ended up. But I just, on a miracle, found, found this piece that I could get just enough to do that with. So these fabrics are special because they, they've traveled with, um, with family members, with people that I love. They've been worn and used and loved and washed and 
some of these other fabrics. Um, this one particular, I have the most fun just deciding what's going to go next to what. <laughs> back in the 90s, can I say this? Back in the 90s, I did line dancing. And I may have talked about this before, but it was kind of a, a Wednesday or a Tuesday night thing where they had free line dance lesson, lessons at this local lounge slash restaurant thing. And you could go in at eight o'clock and they do an hour's worth of line dance class. And it's called Who Needs a Man, right? <laughs> because I was invariably with a bunch of girlfriends who were also not doing anything in the night and it was good it was good exercise and then at nine o'clock after class was over well they had a live band that started up and shoot if we didn't stay another hour at least just to keep working on what we learned in line dance class that day so my line dance shirt is now all cut up and i've used this several times and it's just down to the down to the um dead end now of these blocks so uh, so we're going to sew just a little bit. If this is your first time on Quilt Cam with me, I would love to welcome you. Um, we do this just on occasion whenever um, the, the time is right and I'm home and able to do it and we have a, a free evening that's not um, taken up with other things. Um, we have no agenda. You're welcome to email me and share any photos of anything that you're working on to my email address, which is quiltville at gmail.com. I'm sitting across the desk from my laptop, so I can't, other than little hearts and thumbs up flying by, I can't see the words that are being posted. I won't be able to read your comments until after we finish here. And we go about an hour, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less if the if the camera dies and the internet goes out because I am in the basement. But any communication has to go to my email if you want me to share to ev with everybody else by my phone what you've been working on. Um, I did before I sat down here because I had I'd been binding on this quilt and I had the, the walking foot on last night. I had to move my little sticky seam guide. Two inch squares, sew them side by side grab a ruler, put it on top. Those two squares sewn by side by side should be three and a half inches exactly. If they're not, move your needle or move your guide to give you the right result before you start sewing. I've sewn these blocks on three or four different machines so far. It's not the machine that gives you consistency. It's the seam allowance that you're sewing with and you are in control of that. So. Do some tests. I don't want. I want all of these blocks to be the same size when it's time to put this quilt together. Okay. And these little guys, I can't live without them. It's got. They've got the the holes for marking my seam allowance. If you have the essential triangle tool package, you've also got the bonus buddy in the package that also has those same needle holes. And the needle holes are large enough that you can adjust a little bit side by side to accommodate for different thicknesses of fabric, different kinds of thread you're sewing with and whatever it is. Whatever you have to do to reach unit size, that's where your seam needs to be. So the first thing that I'm going to do is wine. That all of my four patch pairs for this year's leader and ender are still at the cabin sitting on the table. So what I'm going to do instead is grab myself a second block. I want that chicken block, where is it? And I'm going to use these chicken parts as leaders and enders to keep my piecing continuous while I sew this other block. And, and that's another way to do it. It doesn't make progress on the leader ender quilt, but at least it'll keep my piecing going and I won't waste thread or time or bobbin. Okay. I'm sewing on a 1950s, and it might even be as late as early 1960s, just because of the body style. Best Built is the name, made in Japan. Straight stitch only. And I just love these machines. They're so fun. Okay. So what I can also do here is just leave the last triangle under the machine 
and deal with that later. The whole thing doesn't have to come out. Not all the work needs to come out. You can't see because I have my mouse in the way. Um, just leave the last whatever it is under your presser foot. Just nip behind. You can always press that later. You'll be throwing something else in front of it over here. Then you can snip that off. So just keep that piecing continuous. Another way to test your seam, and I'll do this with the iron in just a second, but, you know, fingernails, God gave you 10 of them. They make really good creasers. You can also use a little wooden thing if you need to. But I find that my nails do just as well. We're just trying to bend the fibers and make that lay flat. Okay, so I've got these two strips right sides together. Now we've got them in a strip set, and I'm going to cut four patch pairs. I need three four patches in these blocks. Two and a half inches. We're good to go. Okay, so we're going to fold this in half. Cut it with scissors. You could do it with a rotary cutter if you want to. And this is just kind of a recap of what we did last time. Because if somebody asked me earlier, guess what I don't have? A rotary cutter. It's on the table. I see it over there. Two seconds. Maybe three or four. So somebody asked, um, I think it was just last, last night, how many projects do you have going at any one time? And I thought that this would be a fun topic to talk about tonight. So off the top of my head, um, we have to do a disclaimer on a couple of these, okay? Because they're so old, <laughs> the statute of limitations is already gone. Um, the eternal hexagon project that I'm still working on is is still in progress, okay? And that because I don't consider that a UFO because it is the only take along project I work with, and I work on it during flights and hotel rooms and um, otherwise sitting in airports, whatever it is. So that's just busy bag work, and it doesn't have a deadline. Then there's the stuff for the book that has deadline. And I finished um, the, the quilting and the binding is on project number 12 for, for the next book. So that binding is now in progress and it's upstairs. Um, another project I've got going on is the Dear Jane variation. Excuse me, in the chocolate browns and pinks. It's more than a 10-year UFO. It's probably more like a 15-year UFO. And it's, it's in the hand quilting stage. And I only work on it. When I'm not binding something and I'm at the cabin and I will use that as my evening work. So does that count? Okay. Then there's the um, this thing that I'm working on now, which is now front burner. The leader ender project also doesn't count because it's worked on in between other things. The dreams in my head don't count because they're not in, in fabric yet. So a couple of UFOs I've got going on. There's a kaleidoscope. A string kaleidoscope with a chrome yellow background and it's been waylaid for a long time there's um, another rolling stone variation that was slated for this book that got put back because it just didn't fit the theme and it wasn't far, far enough along to make this this book deadline so maybe the next one so now it's kind of back burner and there's a couple paper piecing things and a couple always 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 string quilt projects swirling in my head so we work on those when we can and um but do i feel guilty about any of them no really i have less than i'm sure less than a dozen in any in, in any state Anybody that has like more than 20 things going, I think you might need a reevaluation. <laughs> but but let me know what you've got going on. I've got a very crooked scene here, and this one's going to have to. Oh, I think it ended okay. It just started a little shallow. I'm just going to re-sew. I can see that. It got a little bit slanty at the end. You know what happens there? If you don't lift up the presser foot and set it down on top of the fabric, it, it there's nothing holding it when it starts to sew so I find I do better with that so I'd love to check into the email now and see just what you've got going on 
give me an honest rundown of how many projects you really think you can juggle at one time and what's the danger zone of something becoming a UFO for you. I'd really like to know. Let's check in. Okay, so we've got here. In the inbox, a little bit slow down here. Diana says, checkerboard rails. This is Diana from Goodlettsville, Tennessee. I want to thank you for this pattern. It was a great way to finally use my cheddar fabric. Thanks for all you do. Oh my gosh. So now I feel like I'm really a slacker because there's her checkerboard, cheddar checkerboard rails right there. So you'll find the free pattern for this year's leader and ender, which is this this quilt right here. See if I can biggie size that and you can see her fabrics a little bit better. Oh, that's just gorgeous. It's a very simple one, but a very fun one. It'll be great for giving maybe to a kid that's going off to college or, or a friend or something. But the free pattern is under the free patterns tab at the top of the blog and you just scroll down to see for checkerboard rails. And mine will probably take me all year to do. Yours might not if you just decide to just piece straight through it because it's pretty straightforward. You've got four patches and, and rail fence units. That's the whole thing. But um, give it a try. This is just absolutely beautiful. I love that checkerboard cheddar fabric. That's wonderful. Joni says, number of projects and pinwheels, she says. Hello from Indianapolis. I'm putting this quilt together tonight during quilt cam, and I'm using my beige long bed 301. The 30s fabric was given to me by my cousin, Susan Crane, and my awesome aunt, Mary Swanson. I haven't seen either one of them in person in probably 30 years. So this is extra special to me. See, we remember. We remember the, the fabrics and who gave them to us and, and what we were wearing for lunch that day. I love that. She says, they are the ones who introduced me to you, and they've been instrumental in encouraging me as a new quilter. I love them so much. So hopefully they're listening tonight. She says, my number of quilt projects in the works is at least a dozen. In my defense, many of them are completed tops ready for quilting. Yeah, completed tops don't count either. That's a whole different stage of finish. I mean, a, a top can stay a top for just a long, long time. I'm talking about stuff that's cut out and partially sewn. The things that are just kind of kitted up sitting in a maybe box and you haven't cut into that fabric yet, that can easily go back to the stash. I'm talking about those projects that are well underway. This is absolutely sweet. I love it. So I'm beginning this so that you can see the colors. But she's got four pinwheels in each block in her 1930s stash. And she set it with that lovely green. Can you see there? Isn't that beautiful? The best quilts don't have to be outrageously difficult in the piecing. They don't. They can just be simple units and the, the repetition of the units and the color and the fabric is just such a delight for the eye. This is gorgeous. Thank you so much for sharing it. I love it, Jody. Beautiful. Judy says, these six inch squares I made on a foundation with only the red center the same in each square. And she's got 225 of them. Holy moly. So it's kind of a an on, on point log cabin. So as you put the square down and then just kind of log cabin around it and then trim them up, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. But they're kind of a courthouse stepsy kind of a thing. Is that a word? Let me biggie it just a little bit so you can see what those squares are. Those are really fun. I love that. That would be a fun one to do with all the strings and strips and scrappy parts. How fun is that? That's gorgeous. Thanks, Judy. Okay, so we have Charlotte saying, thought you might like to see my boxy stars quilt photographed on the Blue Ridge Parkway. I gave it to my daughter for her birthday. Thanks for all your patterns. I really enjoy quilt cam. Oh, that is lovely. So, you know, the Blue Ridge Parkway is one of my favorite places, all of North Carolina and Virginia. Just love it. So that's a gorgeous boxy stars. It looks like a beautiful day, too. That's another free one from the free patterns tab. Two and a half inch strips. Away you go. Stitch and flip corner. Super simple. It's a freebie. Go get it. Okay. So I've now got these four patches. This place, this must have been where a pocket was. I can see some stitching still there. Yeah. 
And the four patches do need some spinning because when these blocks touch each other, the seams need to be opposing each other. And I usually just do this at the iron. You just hold one side down and lift up the other side. There's also a tutorial for four patch spinning under the tips and techniques tab at the top of the blog. I think it's one of the coolest things when you have an instance where you need the bulk reduced and it will work with whatever unit that four patch is ending up next to. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. All righty. So, if I start this way, I can start sewing this and pull this missing triangle off as soon as I get the first units under the needle. And then I'll have to use the other chicken triangles. Okay, so we can get this one off now. Yeah, that looks better. You can kind of just look at a triangle seam and know, okay, that's crooked, that's gotta be fixed. And that's as far as I can go on that one. So I'm gonna send this strip set through. It's just fun to play the leader ender game. Let's see, what else has happened this past week? Bears. <laughs> Check the trail cam photos at the cabin. There's this bear, 2.30 in the afternoon on a Saturday. Um, the hubby and Sadie were up there and it had just been for a walk earlier. And the bear is just sitting there in front of the trail cam, scratching his ear, taking a little walk. Evidently, he still thinks that there's going to be deer corn showing up and there's not. Alrighty, and that, this is where we're just going to grab these triangle pairs. This is why I like to have things cut and kitted up and ready to go. Because then you always have something you can throw under your needle when it's time to remove your work. Oh yeah, chickens, you cute. set that aside for a minute. It gets to the point where I can just put Netflix on in the background and just keep sewing pretty brainlessly if it's something that I don't have to really pay attention to, like nothing with subtitles. Okay, nothing with subtitles. Even if I was paying attention, I couldn't read the subtitles from across the room. And another triangle. When they're cut right sides together, you just you just pick up the pair and away you go. I like these stripes. So I watched Our Souls at Night last night with Robert Redford and um, Jane Fonda. At first, from sitting back here where I was putting the binding on the quilt, I knew that was Robert Redford. I guessed by Jane Fonda's voice that was her because her hair did not look anything <laughs> like anything I've ever seen her wear before. And especially if you've been watching Grace and Frankie recently, you know. It was a different character, and she's just so good. I love that show. It was awesome. And one more triangle. So we'll have three of these triangles done. And I think we'll just send them both through just for good measure.
and leave the last one under the presser foot just like we did before. Okay. We'll give this a quick press. I want to set these straight in one direction in the in the quilt so all the blocks go the same way because it makes this really cool secondary design. Because I'm doing it that way, there's a certain way these have to be pressed. And you'll find diagrams for that on the pattern under the free patterns tab at the top of the blog. But that's one done for the night. It's Once you've got the half square triangles made and the four patches sewn, it's just like putting together a nine patch. It's such a fun, cute, cute block. Like I said, quilting doesn't have to be rocket science to be enjoyable i love that here's one from paul in missouri he says working to finish my solstice blues from pat sloan i use my mom's 1933 singer been working on this one for about a year just a little turtleish he says i'm going to show the center picture here of the quilt i'm going to biggie size it just a little bit oh that is just beautiful I love how the strip piecing makes it look like a Parcheesi board, doesn't it? That's really great, Paul. I love those blues. And his mom's machine, let's see, beautiful. That one, I think I can turn sideways and get a better view. Come on, there we go. Okay, it's a 15. I love this machine. I can see why you do too. There's nothing straight stitches better than an old vintage machine. These are just absolutely fabulous. And how neat that that was your mom's. That's great. That is just great. Glad you could tune in tonight. This one's from a phone number. Oh, and it doesn't have a name. It just area code 512, whoever you are. You sent um, an email as a text. So you put in my email address in your text field. If you use your email address, Instead of your um, text messaging app, I'd have your name. Um, this one says, I am currently working on a variation of your peppermint schnapps block in red, white, and blue for Quilts of Valor. And that's wonderful. I'm going to turn this sideways, too. Did you see the latest Quilt Maker magazine? Come on. Now it got really big. Okay. So these blocks are half pinwheel, half star. Those are peppermint schnapps. And the ones I did were in Christmas fabrics in red and green. Yes, the December or November, December um, magazines are out right now. Well into holiday season, you guys. Well into holiday season. Those are going to be gorgeous for Quilts of Valor. Beautiful. Here's one. says Charter, whoever Charter is. Charter is Beth in Michigan who hasn't put her name into her email. <laughs> <laughs> email field she says I need help my projects in the works are only six or eight but I haven't sewn anything in a few weeks no mojo and I'm just so overwhelmed when I go into my sewing room I have so many kits but really want to work with scraps so I don't do anything I started some scrap blocks with my new treadle and I'm working on some other blocks with my vintage 201. My new large machine is doing some embroidery that needs to be done before I head south for the winter and I'm just overwhelmed. I can hear it in her email, can't you? Okay, the Beth in Michigan. She says, I did a huge sort of a laundry basket of scrap strings by color, ready for the next string project that grabs me. I think... Gosh, what do you do when, you, when you're overwhelmed like that? Maybe somebody has some information for Beth. I know that sometimes I have to do the out of sight, out of mind thing. And that means that I'll pull two or three projects I want to work on and keep them front and center. And everything else goes in a closet or behind closed doors. Because if there's too much around me, I just, I just can't handle it. You get pulled in too many different ways. Um, I do know that if I limit myself to a project and I get more than 50% done on that project, okay, now I'm on the downhill slope, I seem to fall in love with that project again and how it's going to turn out. I can actually see what it's going to look like. The finish is at hand, and that encourages me to keep on going. So I, I really think for myself that limiting myself on the number of projects I allow to have going is I, I just see more, I see more progress on what I'm doing rather than having, you know, one leaf applique to a block over here. And then I have this project started and this project started and this thing and, the, and everything is just in pieces and parts and maybe has one sample block done. 
Um, as for the kits, if you want to go scrappy, there's nothing saying that you can't just undo the kit and reclaim that yardage and just sort it by color family and use it however you want. You, nobody says because you bought the kit that you have to make that pattern with that fabric. You can always save the pattern and decide you want to do it in different colors later. In fact, that might be better because it, then it won't look like everybody else's that's exactly the same as yours. So Beth, I hope that this encourages you and maybe when you go south for the winter, you'll just take two or three projects and the stuff you need to make it. Maybe it's a couple of those kits because those would be easy to pack and you just work on that stuff. Anything else, put it in timeout for a while and don't even look at it until you find your mojo coming back. We've all been there. I hope that you find it soon and I hope that you have some quilty friends down south who will help you uh, regain it as well. Okay, down to the bottom. We got emails coming in like nobody's business down here. Holy cow, way, way down here. You guys are going to keep me busy. Susan Lynch says, Quilt Cam from Singapore. Hi, Susan. Susan's a, a, a friend and I'm excited to have her here. So she says, So excited to catch you live. I'm in Singapore visiting my hubby who's working here for the next year and a half, a year and a half in Singapore. When I'm home, I often miss quilt cam because I'm not online to see the updates, although I do catch them after. It's early morning here. I was up to see the harvest moon and saw the note about quilt cam. I love quilt cam. It's so nice to sew with a friend. That's what it feels like. So thanks for doing that. You're so welcome. Um, I don't have a machine to sew on here, so I brought little hand projects with me, like hexes and some knitting. But I am really working hard on a project I started here before, beaded shoes. It's a tradition to make beaded shoes in the Parankin culture here in Singapore. I hope that I said that right. I probably didn't. When the lady was married, she had to make about 12 pairs, one for each day of the wedding and a pair for her mother-in-law. One pair will be enough for me. These beads are tiny. I have to use a magnifier. My background is turquoise, not yellow. I follow the picture for the pattern and the other shoe will be the opposite. So when you look at your feet, the beads at the Toe of the shoe will point toward each other. I use the highlighter tape to indicate what row I am on. I, I watch a lot of Netflix doing this. If I ever finish, I don't think I would wear them, but I would love to have them framed. And she sent a picture. Oh, my word, they look like needlepoint. Holy moly. They do. They look just like needlepoint. So I'm going to hold this up here so that you can see I'm thinking in it just a little bit. Those beads are tiny, and it that, doesn't that just look like needlepoint to you? But each little space is a bead. That is absolutely gorgeous. No wonder that's taking so long. Holy cow. So I'm going to biggie this up so that we can see the canvas underneath, and you can see how each bead is being stitched onto the that canvas through the holes, just like needlepoint, but it's a bead. That is gorgeous, Susan. I, what's the weather down there in Singapore? That's the one thing I haven't done yet. Here I've got a pack in less than two weeks, and I haven't even checked what the weather in Beijing is yet. Don't know. Okay, Connie says, quarter-inch binding question on the cheddar and blue quilt that I shared yesterday. It will be also on this morning's blog if you haven't seen it. Do you sew the binding so it just touches the tips of the squ on-point squares? Or do you have a small float area? I have bound a lot of quilts, but never attempted a quarter inch binding. Would appreciate a little info if you have time. Um, what I do is I, I trim the quilt, and you'll see this in the pictures from on this morning's blog. I put the quarter inch line on the points of the on point squares that are my border. So I am measuring my seam allowance a quarter inch away from where I want the seam to fall. So put the quarter inch line from point to point to point up the border and trim a quarter inch beyond it. And then I sew a quarter inch seam, which puts the seam of the binding right at those corners. Sometimes I miss a little bit, sometimes it floats a little bit, but that's what I'm aiming for. Um, and I like to trim my quilts before binding so that I get a really nice square corner on all four corners of the quilt and a very nice straight edge. I know some people that sew their binding first and trim later, but I find that I have I have better results for my binding if I trim first. So that so that's what I do. Thanks for asking your question. I'm happy to help there. 
Kelly says, Quilt Cam, yay. It's nice to see you again. I really do look forward to having someone to sew with. I'm working on three different things. Loading her leader and ender on the long arm. And she's got a picture. I'll show you a second. Just finished this one. She's looking for backing fabric. So if it's, if it's a finished top, it's not considered a, a UFO. She's got to find the right backing fabric. A done top is a done top, okay? And finished cutting for my next one. Love all your patterns and hope to make them all. I am also working on my Florence to get her ready to sew. Oh my goodness, is that beautiful? Lots of things. And so she's got if I can this is Kelly Venters. Here's her her leader and ender challenge. That's her hourglass there on the long arm, getting ready to go in. You know, the screen's doing something funny. It's um the, the feed is doing a little wobble. I saw that. Okay. She's got this one ready for backing fabric. Isn't that just beautiful? That's from um, Scraps and Shirt Tales 2, I believe. And then this one, that is beautiful. That's, that, that's not going to go sideways. So maybe it will. Maybe it will. Oh, no. Hang on, hang on. I lost it. Nope, lost it. Where'd she go? Nope, lost. Lost your machine. It flipped emails on me. Let's see if I can find her back. Kelly, there she is. We love our digital things, and we hate our digital things. There it is. Okay. So she's got this beautiful serpentine. What's fun about this machine is you can actually see how it works when it sews because of that rod that goes across there from the pillar to the head. But look at those decals. Isn't that just beautiful? I've passed up a couple of these. I've not seen any that look as nice as this. This is just absolutely gorgeous, Kelly. Beautiful. All righty. Let's spin the wheel and see where we end. Kim Tucker says, almost done with En Provence. Thanks for letting me be imperfect with this project. Now, how do you feel about perfection and, and does perfection drive you? You can find that discussion on today's blog post as well. Um, I almost feel like you gave me permission to make mistakes. Of course I did. I gave you permission. This project was feeling was very freeing, and I am looking forward to many more where I am not stressing about being perfect. And she's in East Texas, <laughs> and she's got her daughter photobombing. That's too cute. Oh, she's even sticking the tongue out. That's hysterical. So there's her en Provence, almost done, and there's her daughter photobombing the camera. Don't let the fear that you're not perfect enough stop you from doing what brings you joy. And then ask yourself, you know, do you, are you worried about it being not perfect because of something that's inside you? Or are you worried about it not being perfect because of what somebody else might say? And for those who, who love to to say things to others about, oh, what a shame that point doesn't match. It would look better if it did. I'd love to slap you with a tuna because unless somebody asked for your um, critique, don't give it. Just, just don't. The friendship is more valuable. If somebody says, hey, you know, what, which fabric should I use for this border? That's fine. But when somebody is really vulnerable and pulling, putting themselves out there and saying, Here's the top I just finished, or how do you like my block? Don't say, oh, tisk, 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 tisk. Those points should have been visible, not hidden in the seam. So um, just a little encouragement for those who are afraid to show their work. Don't worry about things not being perfect. Do it for the joy. And for those who are who have this, this perfection need within themselves, don't try to push that off onto somebody else. Because they'll they'll take on that that feeling that they're not they're not good enough because of your worry that you're not good enough, so you're trying for perfection. So can we just all leave it in the backyard and and let the bears deal with it, and then we'll, 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 we can just uh, do what we can. For instance, I see a little four patch that's sticking up over here. Is it going to bother me? No, because I can trim it off. Um, what else? Okay, this this point didn't match really well. Was sewing really fast during quilt cam? Do I really care? Is it a needle's width or more? That's in the yes side. But if it's just a needle's width or less, it can stay. I don't care. It can just stay. So chicken blocks. 
I can't believe how fast quilt cam time flies. It's already been 45 minutes. Chicken blocks, we like you. And, you know, I was really, oh, here it is. I was really feeling like we could get a lot done today. I kitted up eight blocks. I'm on number two after 45 minutes. Yay. Okay. So I would do this. So this is, we've done this before. And anything that I do and show you on Quilt Cam is something that you need to maybe keep in your memory and try doing things this way. If we were to say, do things like this during our mystery, you'll remember, hey, I saw that technique on Quilt Cam. Now this, this year's mystery, we have not released any information yet. That happens around Halloween. And I will get home, I'm supposed to get home on the 29th. Halloween happens a couple days later. So let me get over my jet lag and, and write a, a post or two and, and share some things and then we will get moving on this year's mystery. If you've not done mysteries with me before, you don't need a whole lot of experience to do them. You just need to be adventurous and patient and read directions more than once before you do them. The most important thing about the mystery, I would say, is the cutting and the sewing for unit size. Okay? And we'll go over all of that. The mysteries are not just here's a pattern on six pages it's like a course it goes for six to seven weeks worth of fridays and each one is detailed step by step so instead of just telling you to make 357 half square triangles we will show you how to cut them how to sew them how to measure for unit size so that you'll have success so if you are a beginner by all means jump in and for those who don't want a largest quilt or aren't sure whether they're going to like what fabrics they're pulling together, you can always just cut it down to half size. Make something smaller. I've had people cut it down to fourth of the units. And then they've got enough to play with when the reveal comes out. And then if they decide that they want it as a big quilt, they can go ahead and make more units. Or they can just make with do with what they've got and have a baby quilt or a wall hanging, a table runner, a bed runner, something like that. But we want it to be fun for you. And I'm really looking forward to this year's. It's going to knock your socks off. It really is. Okay, so these in here. And guess what? I've got to pull. All right, square dance shirt. So we're going to pull these in here now because the. Four patches are sewn. I need to get a couple of those little felt pad stickies and put them on the little lip underneath here because if I get the machine going too fast and I am a pedal to the metal girl, the machine vibrates. Chicken, 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 chicken. Okay. So what else have we got? Okay, stuff in the store. Stuff in the store. The um, triangle booty rulers. We've moved through 200 of those already in a matter of a couple of weeks. And I contacted Lisa at Fabric Fanatics about getting more. At the time I contacted her, she's well into um, prep for quilt market. And that's taking precedence right now. And I told her, don't stress because i'm going to be gone i leave for new york on monday so you know if, if they showed up saturday i can't have all of my saturday and sunday just be about filling orders because i leave on monday and when i get home on from new york i've got like three days home and then i go to china so i may if they do arrive i may put some in the store and then save the rest for when i get back from china and when i'm done with china i am done with travel until after Thanksgiving. So we'll, we'll have more time to do stuff in the store then. So what I will be doing during China is putting all of the digital patterns on deep discount and I will do it then 
likely instead of doing it at Black Friday so that we don't have all of this stuff and the mystery going on at, at the same time. Um, the, I've got more simple folded corners rulers coming in. There's still some in the store. I want to finish this project because I have in plan, in my mind, that I want to do a string quilt updo of Smoky Mountain Stars from the Free Patterns tab, but do it with string blocks and use the simple folded corners ruler to trim the string blocks so that I can use the essential triangle tool to cut corners from strips and sew them on so they fit with zero waste other than what you trim off of the string blocks. So that's that's playing on my mind big time, but um, I'm not allowing myself to dig into that yet. We've got just got way too much going on. Also going on, um, well, bes besides the, the tooth thing that has been kind of weird, I forget, I forget that I am missing a bicuspid on this side of my face. And you know what? I just decided that I can't stop a big smile. If I feel a big smile, I'm going to smile a big smile. I'm not going to try to smaller down my smile just because I've got a gap in my mouth where a tooth is growing. So um, I guess well, the lesson from that is just be who you are and let it shine, whether there's a tooth there or not, right? I'd rather see a smiling, toothless grin than a frown. So um, that's a lesson to me. And uh, what else? What else? What else? Actually, I think that's it. I think that's it. The The next book, I've got eight of the pattern sections written. And quilt number 12 will be more binding worked on tonight as soon as we get done here. Okay, so let me check. Let me press this. Let's get back into here and see what else is coming in. If I missed your email, I will be going through these emails over the next couple of days. I can tell you by the count, there's there's over 100 emails here, and I can't get to them all, but I will try. I will try. I will try. So we had, um, there's one that I saw that I definitely needed because I sent something to her. Where did it go? See, it's, it's there she is. <laughs> Kim, this Kim Andrews in Minnesota says, yes, I'm needing re-evaluation. And 15 years ago, I made a list of UFOs. Then I had a crazy number of projects, definitely over 20, but less than maybe 50. Not certain, but still need to work on many tops. Several tops just need quilting. Current projects, My Blue Heaven, Celtic Solstice, and Dear Jane. How many of you have a Dear Jane quilt going on? I think um, many of us have used that, that quilt as a rite of passage, and it's okay if that's a long-term UFO too. And she's got a Hawaiian applique. So that's not, that's not too bad, Kim. That's not too bad. But those tops, if the stack of tops keeps mounting, then we need to figure out, okay, how are we going to do these? Maybe we send um, one off a quarter. That'll be four quilts a year. Can you send off to somebody or three quilts a year, something like that. Anita from Michigan says, yay for having quilt cam tonight. I'm up at my family's Michigan cabin spending time painting the garage <laughs> and shit. Well, it's like, okay, spending time at the family cabin's an upper. Spending time painting the garage is a downer, she says. But this evening is all about machine quilting. I need to finish a little boy's construction equipment quilt while tuning into Quilt Cam. At my feet tonight is my new studio pup. After nine months of not having a dog in the house, we have a new Chinese Sharpay. Tonight, Odie is learning that Quilt Cam time is quiet. Chew on your bone time. I like to have no more than three projects in the fabric stage. More than that, it's not fun juggling the work and nothing seems to get to the done stage anytime fast. Usually at least two others in the thinking or designing stage at most times. Can't wait for the mystery quilt color release. And that's from Anita. And she's sent a picture of her puppy. Oh, he's so cute. Will that go sideways? Yes. Oh, he's all stretched out. So cute. So he's kind of a chocolate brown black. Little Sharpay, love to see those little wrinkly faces. Yeah, he's Odie. 
What a sweetheart. A little puppy breath goes a long way to cure the many ills that we have. Love that. Funny story about Sadie. You know, Sadie is, is a, she's a very friendly dog. She loves other dogs. She would be a, a pack dog, I think. Um, she gets so excited when she sees other dogs. She thinks that, that, that they're coming just to play for her. Our neighbors next door moved. And the folks that moved in have a small dog. Smaller than Sadie, not sure what kind it is. It's not a, not a furry, furry thing. It's a short-haired thing. But this dog evidently is an escape artist. So they would chain the dog on a, on a bungee or a whatever to the front porch rail so the dog could only go that far and couldn't escape the yard because there was no fences. Well, Sadie would go over there and spend all of her time over there. We'd put her out to do her business, and pretty soon she's next door, and she's playing with neighbor dog. Well, they like Sadie coming over there, so we let Sadie go play with neighbor dog. Well, neighbor dog evidently um, needed some room to run in, and off of the, the leash bungee thing, so they put up a chain link fence around just the front of their yard. Yes, I know. We, we don't live in an HOA <laughs> for many reasons. And, you know, maybe maybe they'll grow some flowers along their chain link fence. It's okay. It's it's all right. So yesterday, Dave and I are going to lunch. And we're in the pickup, and we're, we're pulling up the driveway, and the driveway kind of goes up to the road, and then, then we, we make our turn to go past the neighbor's house. And lo and behold, through the chain link fence, we see that Sadie is inside the chain link fence. And she and neighbor dog are just, just laying there. And we're just laughing. Talk to Jeff when he got home from work. He says, yeah, she let Sadie in to come play with her dog. And then she let Sadie back out. And Sadie has her own bowl and water <laughs> at the neighbor dog's house. It's like, okay, Sadie. So Sadie's now, she's is she 11. She's going to be 12. She's, she's going to be 12. So Sadie now gets to go to senior dog care <laughs> at the neighbor's. And uh, it's, it's just just way too fan funny. And then there's the, the third dog that lives like on the next street over, but also comes to play. And oftentimes you'll find the, these three dogs just hanging out together like, like they're best friends. It's, it's nice to live in a dog-friendly neighborhood. But that Sharpay, super, super cute. If it weren't for my traveling, knowing that Sadie loves to have other dogs around so much, if, if Dave wasn't traveling for his job and I wasn't traveling for mine, we would definitely get a second dog just so that Sadie could relate to somebody and stay in her own yard. So, okay, super cute. Natalie says, hello from Latrobe, Pennsylvania, Las Vegas Bridal Veil Girl. You know what? I was looking at um, our, our Las Vegas photos just the other day because of that terrible thing that happened in Las Vegas. I wanted to find some photos of Las Vegas that I had taken to include in that post. I just didn't want to use stock photos. And the photos... And the slideshow of our bridal veil opening night gala came up. And I looked through all of those again. So you were just on my mind. You were just on my mind, Natalie. She says, you're a ter terrific lady and it's been too long. So I'm so glad you're just popping in to say hello, Natalie. We'll have to do that again somewhere at some, at some point. So this one is from Marina who says, my current project. I'm working on this flag quilt wall hanging to honor the linemen who work so tirelessly to restore electricity after hurricanes. I'm calling it restoring power to the people. And here's a photo. And it's, it, it's, can you see it's a silhouette of a lineman going up a flag? You can see just a little bit of the, the, the blue, the white stars on the blue up in the upper corner. But this is the, I'm looking at this in the song Wichita Lineman is coming to my mind. That is going to be just, just beautiful. I'll tell you what, so so much stuff has happened since we were able to meet last. Um, at least Florida's back, getting back on their feet. Texas is getting back on their feet, and those poor people in Puerto Rico. You know, my aunt and my uncle were down there for both hurricanes, and Maria packed them a wall up, and they were without power for several days. I still don't know what's um, been restored. They were finally able to. Um, meet with somebody who had a ham radio and the ham radio in Puerto Rico was able to contact another ham radio here in North Carolina and then that ham radio operator was able to contact uh, my aunt's sister my aunt Joy up in Minnesota and let them know we're fine we have no power we have no water we have 
enough food and water stored, we think. We have a generator. We um, have no cell communication or whatever. But my Uncle Tony, his, his parents are still alive. And his aunts, his, his, I think it's his mother's sisters, are, are still there and they're quite elderly. And, and so they stayed in Puerto Rico because of family. And this is what family does. So um, my heart and, and prayers and well wishes and money from my pocket going to Puerto Rico um, because they're not another country. They're us. Puerto Rico is us. And if you would send it to Houston, if you'd send it to Florida, by all means, Puerto Rico, they, they need us. And, and they're not a burden. It's a blessing to be able to help our own. Um, I think that's it. I think that's a good, good note to end on. Let me maybe one more. Looks like we're not getting two blocks done tonight. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so Mom Stockton says, my two big UFOs are Aliatare and my second Celtic solstice and my en Provence progress still. So <laughs> she's, it's, it's in a tub and it's labeled. Can you read that? It says Aliatare on it. I know the camera's doing kind of wobbly things there. But so it's, it's still in there. It looks like a lot of folded yardage in there. So how far are you on that? And then this one. What did she say? This is, I love it. You know, I love clear plastic tubs. I use clear plastic tubs for everything because you can see what's in it. That's awesome. So she's got a lot of stuff going there. And then this one. Oh, yes. So her en Provence is in progress right there. And you can see how beautiful those fabrics are together. That's wonderful. So in closing today says, I promised myself I'd only go till nine o'clock so I can go put about another hour and a half on that binding. The quilt that I'm binding on is the last one for the book. The other 11 are already at photography. And my goal is to finish the binding and the hanging sleeve on this one so that I can ship it out by FedEx by Saturday. It's Thursday. That leaves me tonight and tomorrow. And part of the day Saturday will probably be just be sitting on the couch finishing this binding. Um, and to get it off. And once that's gone, then I'm ready to go to New York on Monday. I'm looking forward to visiting with two guilds in New York while I'm up there. And then when I come home, I have three days and we go to China. So that's it. There probably will be no more time for quilt cam until November. So this will be it. But please follow along with the blog. I'm not sure what our connectivity will be in China. I've decided to go ahead and get a VPN, so I should be able to connect um, by Facebook. I'll be able to connect through um, WeChat for with my husband for text messages and things like that. I have no idea if I'll be able to upload to the blog or not. If I don't, this is your time to catch up on those UFOs so you have something to show me when we get back. If it's still early wherever you are, don't stop now, by all means. If you're making good progress doing what you are now, keep going. You'll really enjoy seeing the progress that you made tonight in the morning when you wake up and, and, and pet it just a little bit. Um, if, if you're headed to bed, sweet dreams to you. And until we see each other again, this is Bonnie in the basement at Oakville saying go sew something. We'll see you later, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs>